Chess friends, today I have a very exciting and thrilling chess game that was played between Dragon Chess and me, in this game, I will show you many chess traps and tactics that were employed, I promise you that this game is more exciting than anything you've seen on YouTube, so let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with E4, and as Dragon Chess is a top chess engine and a formidable opponent, it decided to go with the Sicilian defense, here, you can go with D6. And after the exchanges, black usually plays knight f6, you can consider knight c6 later in the game, but after a couple of moves, when the bishop to g5 comes out on the board, black might consider e6, which is a strategic move, you can respond with f4, this is a very interesting chess trap that you can employ in your games, something like knight d7 and bishop c4 comes on the board to attack the e6 pawn. The best move for black would be to consider queen d6 to get this dark square diagonal or h6. But if black didn't have breakfast in the morning and comes in like a gymnastic, he will face pain in his stomach because you can respond with bishop takes e6, forcing black to capture, after knight takes e6, the queen has to move, then you can play knight d5, after the capture, queen takes d5 will arrive with an attack on the rook. Regardless of black's move, whether he saves the rook or blocks it, bishop e7 will face a very critical situation, the best move for black would be to consider queen a5 or queen e3 check because I can respond with knight c7 check, the game will be over for black. After capturing with queen e6, queen takes e7 will be checkmate, this is a very interesting chess trap that has been played only a few times in the Lee Chess database, you can employ this chess trap and message your opponent with gg. So, going back, d6 was not played in our actual game, we had knight c6, the standard opening move of the Sicilian, and after knight f6 occurred in the game, it is a very popular Sicilian defense variation, after knight c3, black has to choose whether to play d6 or e6, Komodo dragon chose d6 because it is a dragon and wants to fire up the board, dragons are not just fairy tales, they are a reality in chess, after a few moves, White could go with f4 or queen d2, but I decided to go with bishop e2, eventually. There is another variation where white can consider f3, this setup is liked by Ding Liren, the world champion, you know Ding Liren became world champion by accident because Magnus Carlsen left his seat when a cockroach appeared, queen b6 might occur, then something like bishop e3, and many chess players might consider capturing the b2 pawn, but I will consider knight b5 threatening to go to c7, even if you protect that square by moving your rook, you just forget about your queen. I can attack your queen by playing rook b1. And your queen will be trapped, but don't worry, that didn't happen in reality, in reality, f3 was never considered by me because that would be just a garbage move, like a super grandmaster, no matter if he is world champion or not, queen b6 was played to apply pressure on the knight and the pawn, moving back the bishop to e3 seems logical because after the exchanges. Capturing on b2 is just a vulnerable move because it aligns the bishop on this diagonal where the knight can make significant damage to the queen by playing knight d5. Afterwards, knight c7 will be considered by white and will win your rook. So, going back to the position, we discovered that bishop e3 was a good move, but I didn't consider that move because I am the big fish, I played knight b5, directly attacking the queen side with a single knight, have you ever watched a movie where one hero fights with millions of fighters? That is a common theme in movies, I don't like movies because in reality, I am the hero who fights with millions of chess engines, a6 might be considered by black, but I will suggest you consider bishop takes f6, eliminating the knight to play knight d5, the queen has to run no matter if she gives a check or not, knight c7 can arrive, but you know what. The worst scenario is that this game will be a draw because neither player can develop properly, in our actual game, Komodo did not choose a6. Instead, he played rook c8 to protect that square and later on, he might consider a6, but for now, I played bishop e3, and after a few moves, we have a check, I mean, after the queen moves, we have castled, getting rid of this queen's vulnerable attack. 
Let's see whether my two knights can potentially harm the Black King because the king is located in the center of the board, he first initiated with a6 to kick out my knight, but I responded with a cunning move, a4, this move is crucial. Even capturing the knight is just losing for you because after the capture, the queen will be under attack, after queen c7, I can regain my material, and afterwards, I can consider knight b5, you cannot capture my knight because after bishop takes b5, the king will be just vulnerable, therefore, something like queen d7, knight a7 will come to attack your pieces. Believe it or not, after the exchanges, my rook can arrive at a7 to launch an attack on the queen, as the queen moves back, bishop a6 will follow, this position is ruinous for you, every piece of my army is creating immense pressure and paralyzing your position like an eight-handed octopus, this position is winnable for me, with a four-point advantage. So, let me share a motivational quote in sudden with you. The sun is a daily reminder that we too can rise again from the darkness, that we too can shine our own light. Returning to the position, we discover that capturing the knight is a very bad move, this is why some may consider playing g6 to build a solid defense. But you know what? I can shatter your dreams by playing knight d5, making significant gains in the dark squares, even playing bishop g7 is a poor choice because bishop takes b6 can win your queen, capturing the knight in this position would face e takes d5, and your knight will be under attack, additionally, bishop takes b6 will make the position a dead loss. Some players might consider capturing the knight, but it would give me the open file, and subsequently, bishop takes b6 will attack the queen, you will lose the queen, and the game will be in my favor. Returning to the position, we discover that playing any normal move is wasted, this is why dragon, with its big wings and fiery breath, considered knight e5, attacking the knight on b5, I decided to play knight a7, putting the knight in a vulnerable spot, my knight becomes a liability for me, the knight from f3 started its journey to see the Amazon jungle and pyramids and then reached Africa's Kalahari jungle, the knight is just a world traveler, I played queen d4. And you still cannot consider g6 to secure your king because now I can strike immediately with f4, deflecting the knight, after the knight exchanges, b4 will follow, attacking the queen, as the queen retreats to c7, b5 will come to apply pressure, whether you move back your bishop or capture the pawn, I can easily recapture it, after the rook exchanges and the bishop retreats, rook a8 will come with an invasion on the king. As the bishop moves back, b6 will be considered, this position is terrible for you, the queen has no safe square because even queen c6 will face bishop takes b5, pinning your queen to the king, the position will favor Sumi, as you will lose everything. Returning to the position, we discovered that g6 is not possible, which is why g5 was played in the game, b4 will follow up with queen d8, so I played b4, why did I play b4? Because the queen can go to the d8 square, which actually happened in the game, what is my strategy? My strategy is to capture the pawn on g5, if you give me a treat in a restaurant, why wouldn't I take it? I don't like diesel or petrol, being a robot, I like sweet dishes like cake or pastries because, after all, I have a mouth, now, b5 may occur for counterplay on the queen's side, in this position, some may think of playing rook g8 to open this file, but I will capture the knight, forcing you to recapture, creating split pawns, after something like f4, bishop h3 will create space for the knight, and rook f2 should follow, the game would continue like this, but in our actual game. He did not consider rook g8 because he prioritized his king's safety, he is more interested in securing an apartment rather than buying a gun without bullets, this activates his bishop like a sniper, after f4 happens in the game. I say, come, bishop, I will grab you, I will hold your throat and throw you under my feet because you was born to serve my lotus feet. Knight g6 occurred in the game, and in this position, Playing f5 or e5 is not advisable, while f5 may seem reasonable, after knight e5, the bishop moving back, and knight h5, something like bishop e3, black can consider knight f3, checking the king and queen simultaneously and losing your queen. Returning to the position, we see that f5 is wasted, as is e5, because after castling, 
capturing, and recapturing, your bishop will be under attack, the bishop is unable to escape from the border, which consists of 5000 volts of electricity, if you want to taste what an electricity's taste is, then you can put your tongue on the electricity board to taste it. LOL, don't do that, I am just joking. So, going back to the position, we see that playing e5 or f5 is just a vulnerable move, we have knight e5 on the board because I know the best move for every situation in chess, castling now is a very bad choice because after captures and recaptures, f5 will attack the knight, as the knight moves, we will play knight b6, and capturing the knight on a7 will face knight takes d7, attacking the rook as well, so, after queen c7. This position holds a significant advantage for me, where rook a3 can come to control the third rank, and rook c3 can also come to attack along the file where the black king is very weak and burdened, like dragon chess. Returning to the position, we see that castling is not possible because the knight is under attack, this is why dragon chess tried his hidden talent by playing knight h5, he tried to throw a kitchen knife at my queen and the rook, as the queen slides, the knife hits the rook. The question is whether you should capture the rook or not, if you dare to capture the rook, I will grab your knight first because your knight was just looming there, your bishop is under attack, and if the bishop moves back, it's not knight c7 check to fold the pieces, the best move should be pawn to e5, and now you can consider knight c7, black might think of castling, but it is also a burden move, like the burden thoughts of dragon chess, I can capture your piece on g6, forcing you to recapture, but the f-pawn is not capable of capturing the piece because it has no contentment, like you, who prefers snacks food, free wi-fi, and lying in bed 24 hours after drills, he is just lazy, the h-pawn should capture the piece. And then knight takes e7 will arrive to check the king, the king can't go there because knight takes g6 will ruin the king and queen's position completely on the board. Playing king h7 looks reasonable, but after f5, my queen can arrive at h4, creating a significant advantage for me, and the game will be favorable for me, I am the chef in my restaurant, and I can make any dish I desire, whether it is tomato sauce or komodo dragon sauce. Going back to the position, we see that the rook cannot be captured because the rook is like a five-star general. Dragon chess just retreated his knight to f6, noticing that knight c7 can come, but it is not the best move because, subsequently, after the capture occurs, your knight on a7 will be ruined, the bishop from g7 has the open diagonal to control. So, let me share a beautiful and astonishing quote for you. You gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face, you must do the thing which you think you cannot do. So, going back to the position, we see that knight c7 is a bad choice, I decided to deflect the knight on f6 by capturing the piece, capturing it with the pawn will ruin your position because it will create two split pawns, I can split these pawns by playing knight c7, slapping the king, and grabbing your rook, this position is different from the previous variation I mentioned, queen d4 can come, protecting the knight, attacking the pawn, and creating pressure on the f6 pawn simultaneously. Have you ever seen a move like that? You may attempt f5 to open the diagonal, but after I capture and the king moves to e6, my rook will arrive at d1, putting significant pressure, after capture and b6 to protect the bishop, e takes f5 will attack the knight, playing knight e7 will ruin your position because f6 will win back material, this position is just vulnerable for you, with a 6 point advantage for me. Going back to the position, we see that the pawn cannot capture the bishop because it is not capable, just as you are not capable of doing what I can in chess, after capturing on f6, black's pawn structure becomes very weak. This position is almost equal, but after queen d4, I make significant pressure on these pawns, we have b6 to capture the knight, a5, and after some moves, black just grabbed my knight, and he is a knight up, but the main problem for black is that his king is insecure. I have a passed pawn, and after rook takes a6, it creates two passed pawns, and eventually, I can move my c pawn, which will fulfill my dream of becoming a doctor, so what happened if I don't become a doctor? I will marry a doctor or have a child to force him to become a doctor, this way, my dream will be accomplished, 
a common desire of many parents, if you can relate, then I will give you a hug. After castling, we have h4 to consider h5, and capturing the pawn on h4 is a bad move because I can block the knight's file by playing f5, trapping the knight. So, going back to the position, we have h5 because if I can sacrifice my pawn, so can he, but capturing the pawn is not a good move because bishop b5 can attack the rook and the rook on a6, the bishop is not located on e2. Going back to the position, we see that the bishop needs to protect that square, which is why I initiated c4 to protect it. After a couple of moves, we have f5, attacking the pawn and the h4 pawn simultaneously on the board, I just ignored that and played c5 because I wanted to get my two connected past pawns, he captured the pawn, and after I captured the knight, it became evident that the pawn still couldn't capture the bishop, because my queen could come to the light square to check the king, this is why he first initiated an attack by playing d takes c5, it was a very tricky move because it contained a trap. You cannot capture it with the b pawn because rook d7 would come, attacking the queen and the rook simultaneously, which is why I had to capture it with my queen, after the capture, we had rook a8 to pressure the bishop, after the rook moved and the queen check came, we had several checks on the board, I grabbed the rook and considered rook c1 to go to the c7 square. After a couple of moves, we had e1, rook exchanges, and queen d8, I captured the rook, and after a couple more moves and checks, I grabbed the bishop on c8 and promoted my passed pawn, this position was very winning for me because my passed pawn was much faster, I promoted it into a new queen and checkmated black on the next move, this was a very brilliant and strategic trap game, I hope you enjoyed my traps and all the chess tactics, as well as my commentary on this game. You can subscribe and like my channel, wishing you all the best. Bye bye, see ya, take care.